Hi guys, welcome to Mech Studies. Today we are going to learn all about the refrigeration cycle. We will cover refrigeration cycle basics, refrigeration cycle parts, how does it works, states of refrigerant and definition. Let us consider a hot body and it is kept at 50 degree centigrade temperature and there is a cold body and it is set as 23 degree centigrade temperature. Now what do you think? Heat will flow from hot body to cold body or cold body to hot body? Definitely it will go from hot body to cold body or higher temperature to lower temperature. So heat flow happens from hot body to cold body. And this is a simple heat transfer philosophy which we have learned in our basics. Now consider outside is very hot and it is about 50 degree centigrade and your room is 24 degree centigrade. So what will happen? Gradually the heat will flow from outside to inside of the room and the room temperature will increase. Say it is 35 degree centigrade and over the time it will be more. Now 35 degree centigrade is it comfortable to us? No. It is not comfortable to us. So what we have to do? We have to remove the heat from the room. So how to do it? So this is the cold body and this is the hot body and we have to transfer the heat from cold body to hot body. So what to do? We have to work. We have to do externally. So external work should be done and that is why the concept of refrigeration cycle comes into picture. So refrigeration cycle, it has four basic parts, evaporator, compressor, condenser and expansion valve. It has also few auxiliaries like dryer, receiver and different instruments. However, we will discuss here the main parts of the refrigeration cycle to clear the basic concept mainly the main parts of the refrigeration cycle. So these are the main units and all are connected by pipe that is called refrigerant pipe. Normally it is made of copper. So this is evaporator. In the evaporator as the name suggests evaporation happens. See this is basically a coil for heat transfer and the second part which we call as a heart of refrigeration cycle that is compressor as the name suggests compression happens it acts like a heart heart pumps the blood compressor pumps the refrigerant so this is the condenser this is also cooling coil as the name suggests condensation happens here see this is also a heat exchanger which consists cooling coil and the fourth part of the refrigeration cycle is expansion valve. So here expansion happens. So we will discuss all the parts and their functions in details. Evaporator. Before learning the evaporator, let's learn how does cooling happens. To understand, let us take one example. This is a spirit. The spirit has a special property of evaporation. At normal pressure and temperature, it starts evaporation. Now if you take some drop of spirit on your palm, after a couple of seconds, you will see your palm gets cold. Now how does it happen? Let's try to understand. The spirit has a normal properties of evaporation now what do you think? Where from it gets the latent heat of vaporization? It takes the heat from your palm and gradually the palm losing heat. Losing heat means the temperature will be down and palm gets cold. Let's try to understand these things in a simple diagram. This is the palm and this is the spirit. Here evaporation happens. Now this is the contact surface where from the spirit takes the heat for evaporation. 
so the pan loses heat and gets cold now if we consider this portion instead of palm air and here it is instead of spirit it is refrigerant let's see what happens refrigerant has a properties like spirit normal pressure and temperature it start evaporation and latent heat of vaporization it takes from the air so air loses heat and gets cold so this is the pipe so this is the refrigerant pipe normally it is made of copper refrigerant is passing through this pipe and heat transfer happens let's try to understand how heat transfer happens through the refrigerant pipe this is a liquid refrigerant and outside refrigerant pipe is hot air and refrigerant takes heat from the hot air and refrigerant transferred into vapor and by losing heat air becomes cold let's see the transformation of refrigerant and air so here cold refrigerant changed into hot refrigerant and hot air changed into cold air by losing heat to refrigerant and this thing happens in evaporator so basically a heat exchange happens between refrigerant and air in the evaporator let's see the evaporator at a glance to clear the basic concept so this is basically a cooling coil made of copper and it is like a coil shape to increase the surface area so the more heat transfer can happen and you see this is the fin fin is provided to increase the surface area look at the fin from the closer look normally it is made of copper and sometimes it can be made of aluminium fin as well let's see how does it work so this is the evaporator coil cold refrigerant enters in the evaporator coil and it takes the heat from the surroundings air and it becomes heated and forms liquid plus vapor look at this portion here liquid refrigerant change into liquid plus vapor and temperature is increased and after that it takes more heat and finally it becomes refrigerant vapor and by taking heat it becomes saturated vapor and again taking heat it becomes slightly over superheated vapor and it leaves from the evaporator coil so in the refrigeration cycle we have learned the basic concept about the evaporator now we will learn the compressor so this is an example of a typical compressor in a refrigeration cycle so there are different parts of a compressor normally reciprocating or scroll or screw compressor is used it compresses the refrigerant vapor and increase the pressure and temperature we will make a detailed video for the compressor since the vapor is compressed here this cycle is called vapor compression cycle so what is the main function of the compressor in refrigeration cycle main functions are circulation of refrigerant increase vaporization in evaporator and help to heat rejection let us try to understand so this is the impeller of the compressor and it is connected to a motor when motor runs impeller will also rotate the rotation of compressor impeller creates a low pressure here and low pressure means definitely it will take the refrigerant vapor from the evaporator so this refrigerant is low pressure and slightly moderate temperature so low pressure and slightly moderate temperature refrigerant enters into the compressor and after the compression refrigerant vapor change into high pressure and high temperature so basically it creates a pressure differential at inlet low pressure and outlet high pressure so this pressure differential helps to flow the refrigerant inside the refrigeration cycle so this is the compressor and this is the evaporator and here is the compressor inlet 
Now the evaporator and compressor are connected by a refrigerant pipe and refrigerant vapor circulates from the evaporator to compressor. Since compressor sucks the refrigerant vapor, there will be a low pressure within this evaporator and it helps to increase the evaporation process in the evaporator. See, it takes the refrigerant vapor from the evaporator. Now let us consider a hot body at 60 degree centigrade temperature and another hot body as 100 degree centigrade temperature. And one cold body is 45 degree centigrade and here also one cold body is at 45 degree centigrade. Now what do you think? Where heat will transfer fast? In the first one or the second one? Definitely in the second one as the temperature differential is more 100 degree centigrade to 45 degree centigrade. It is same as the water flow from high head to low head. And this is the evaporator outlet. The temperature is less. Now we have to remove the heat to the atmosphere. So here comes compressor. It increase the temperature and pressure of the refrigerant. Basically it increases the temperature differential and helps to remove the heat. Compressor will not remove the heat but it will help to remove the heat. In this refrigeration cycle the third part is condenser. Let's learn about the condenser basics. So this is the condenser. It's basically a heat exchanger coil. So look at this. This is coil normally made of copper or sometimes aluminium. This is fins normally made of aluminium or copper. And this is the fan which circulates the air through this cooling coil. So in the condenser it takes the fresh air that is cold air and hot refrigerant comes into this coil. Since the air flow happens through this coil there will be heat exchange between this refrigerant and the air. Air becomes hot and refrigerant becomes cold. Compressor provide high pressure superheated vapor and it goes to the condenser. So we have to remove the heat. Let's see how does it work. This is basically a heat exchanger coil. High pressure superheated vapor entered into the condenser coil and due to the air flow through this coil its temperature is gradually reduced. So the reduction of the temperature makes the superheated refrigerant vapor into saturated vapor. Further reduction of the heat change into vapor to liquid. See this is the liquid however it has small amount of vapor as well and at the outlet of the condenser coil high pressure refrigerant liquid comes out from this condenser coil. When refrigerant vapor changed into liquid its volume will be little bit less and the process of condensation will be faster. Let's talk about the fourth part of the refrigeration cycle that is expansion valve. High pressure refrigerant liquid comes out from the condenser coil. It has some amount of vapor as well. So we have to change this vapor into liquid. Here comes expansion valve. This is the expansion valve. It mainly helps to control the refrigerant flow and as the name suggests expansion happens and help to change the vapor into liquid. Let us try to understand how does it work. So this is the expansion valve and this is the inlet where high pressure medium temperature saturated liquid enters and this is the outlet where low pressure low temperature liquid exit. This is a valve which sends the condition of the vapor and it is touched at the outlet of the evaporator coil. This is the coil. Basically an independent refrigerant circuit is there within this section to measure the condition of the refrigerant vapor at the outlet of the evaporator. And it can create pressure based on the vapor condition. 
so here is one diaphragm look at this it looks like this when the independent circuit refrigerant give pressure the diaphragm will be bent and the diaphragm is connected with a spindle and there is one orifice and at the below section you see there is one stopper if diaphragm gives a pressure then spindle goes down and this orifice will be open and here is the refrigerant will flow so expansion will happen here as well as it controls the flow of the refrigerant let us try to understand the refrigeration cycle and its working process in the evaporator air is passed through the evaporator and hot air changed into cold air and refrigerant takes the latent heat of vaporization and becomes low pressure superheated vapor and it enters into the compressor and here compression happens and we get high pressure and high temperature superheated vapor and after the compressor high pressure superheated vapor enters into the condenser here heat exchange happens cold air becomes hot air and refrigerant vapor release the heat and becomes high pressure moderate temperature liquid it has liquid plus vapor conditions and after that it enters into the expansion valve and expansion happens and we get low pressure low temperature liquid at the outlet of the expansion valve the bulb of the expansion valve is touched to the outlet of the evaporator and control the condition of the refrigerant and flow so we have got a basic idea about the refrigeration cycle so here we are getting cold air with the help of the evaporator look at this at our home we see our indoor unit and evaporator coil is here and we get cooling effect or the refrigerating effect so we can define refrigeration cycle the refrigeration cycle is a thermodynamic cycle to generate refrigerating effect with the use of an evaporator compressor condenser and expansion valve i hope the basic is clear thank you so much and please visit makestudies.com